Okay, now, go. This is educational series number four, how to administer your vaccine. You're going to get a baggie with instructions inside as well, so please look at the baggie instructions. You're going to get four vials uh, for two vaccines, so today we're going to end up doing the first vaccine. So it's one liquid, one powder. They're, they're separate vaccines, and when you add them together, they're going to activate. So one of these is the Chelsea virus and the rhinovirus, and then this one is the pan leukemia. So you're going to need both stickers off the vials, and you're going to, don't forget to put them in your record. You're going to have to put them in your record and then date it. So make sure not to forget to do that. Um, I'll take them off so you can see them more clearly. I just love my household all full of noise and all kinds of activity going on. So, and I'm demolishing this sticker here. These stickers are not that easy to get off. And I send these um, vaccines home and I rarely give these to my kittens myself because I give the injectable version since they're only eight weeks old. This kitten is now 12 weeks old. So I'm able to give the vaccine now. And now I'm able to see firsthand how difficult it is to do this. So I can commiserate with you on that. Okay, so again, you can see the liquid versus the liquid versus the powder. So you want to put take the cap off. And it's got a middle seal. And there's a rubber stopper in it. This is actually the first time I'm doing this too. <laughs> so this will be first for everybody here. And it's got some metal and a rubber stopper. So we need to pour the liquid into the powder. Now keep in mind, you don't want to pour the powder in because otherwise the powder goes everywhere and you're not pouring in. Well, I'll be darned. Let me get my let me get my uh, suction thing. Maybe that will work. Oh, beautiful. That works beautiful. All right. So, guys, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I think the best way to do this is suction it up with the pipette that you are given. Put it into the liquid. Um, you can put the pipette down. These are vaccines will not bother you. Um, they're for animals only. They're, they won't affect people. And so you want to mix it by putting it in your palm and rolling it very gently, mixing it back and forth. You don't want too many bubbles because that will interfere in trying to get it into the pipette, um, the, you know, the full dose. So the tricky part about this whole thing is that you're going to suction it all up in the pipette, but then you need to give like half in each nostril. So trying to judge giving half in each nostril while you have a cat that has wants nothing to do with you right now is going to be the most interesting part of this whole thing. So I believe I got all of it. This is what it should look like. So it's all completely empty. There's some bubbles in here. So now we have to scruff her and you're gonna have to if you have her upside down a little bit that should help. So you see the nostrils pretty small. I'm gonna put Half inside that nostril, half inside this nostril. Yeah, I know, you're not going to like that. And by having them upside down, it'll, you'll, you're, you're using gravity. And it's okay that it's going down their neck and that they're, they're drinking some of it. And it's fine, it's not going to hurt them. Um, but, you know, it's getting into their nasal passageways. So that's all of it. Okay, you can put her down now. So do expect a light grade fever as her immune system is activated. This is a live virus, but again, it cannot affect people, only animals. Uh, so make sure all the animals in your home, your cats, sorry, in your home have already been vaccinated for this because they can do some live viral shedding. So as long as they've already had at least one vaccination, they're gonna get some protection. But do expect a light gray fever, and what this means is that they probably will sleep more. And they may eat less as they're not feeling so well. They probably will do some sneezing because you just shoved something up their nose. I'm pretty sure it's not comfortable. If you can reminisce when you've had water shoved up your nose. It's kind of like how it feels for them. Um, that or flu mist. Um, so do expect some sneezing. Um, and this should last about two or three days. 
if they continue having respiratory symptoms like sneezing for more than seven days, likely what ended up happening is that their immune system became challenged, like it should, and some opportunistic uh, bug lying around took an advantage of that situation, and they probably just had a common cold, um, for which regular antibiotics can treat. Um, but that's a very rare, except um, notable, um, side effect. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. Um, otherwise, this is a lot safer than doing an injectable vaccine as you are getting rid of all potential for injection site carcinoma, which is a type of cancer caused by injecting a vaccine. So this is not being injected. It's right in the nose, so it's a lot safer on that account. Um, other, if you have any more questions, please feel free to call me, and thank you for watching this video.